Good evening and welcome to this Monday Thursday service coming from Church of the Palms in Sarasota, Florida. We are gathered by the Holy Spirit from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and brought to the Feast of Heaven, the Lord's Table. Monday Thursday receives its name from the Latin mandatum, or the new commandment, or the new band-aid given by our Lord Jesus Christ. At the Last Supper, Jesus washed his disciples' feet and commanded them to love and serve one another as he had done. We encourage you to have available with you during this service some bread and some wine or juice to commune with us later in the service. Also plan to join us tomorrow evening at 6.30 as we find ourselves within the shadows of the cross in our Good Friday service. We welcome you to that time as well. And as well, on Easter Sunday, we will be gathered at 9 a.m. Uh, to celebrate the gift of the resurrection and to rejoice in the new life brought us by Jesus Christ. So we will hope to see you throughout the course of this Holy Week as we seek to be walking the footsteps of Jesus to the cross and empty tomb. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Let us lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Let us worship God. Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. If we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we receive discipline so that we may not be condemned along with the world. With confidence in God's abundant mercy, let us examine ourselves and confess our sin. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we fail to fulfill your will. 
Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully or love one another as you command. In your mercy, forgive and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. Amen. In the grace of God's mercy, our sins have been considered and forgiven. We are called to live lives of true repentance and service. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. 
I am your servant, the child of your serving maid. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17 and 34, 35. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As Genevieve read to us, Jesus' command is to love one another as he has loved us, and it is for always. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. This is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. I like words and commands that are positive. The first year of our marriage, we needed a security system for our house. Will got a salesman to come in and tell us about his company's system. The man came in with all his props and began his speech. 
He started with how some other companies are not good. I interrupted him and said to him, sir, would you please tell us why yours is positively good and why we should buy your system? We don't really need to learn about why other companies' products are bad. We like to know why your company's product is good. He said to me, you're throwing me off. I'm trained to give you a speech of why all the other companies and competitors' products are bad first before I can tell you how good ours is and why you should buy it. So he went on, starting over about some other companies being bad. And then I interrupted him, as you might have guessed, and said, please tell us why yours is good. We really don't need to hear why other companies' products are bad. So he said, well, I have to go through my training as I'm trained. He started over again about some other company and why it's bad, and I interrupted again. And then he got mad, packed up his stuff, and left. Will and I never did learn why his company's product was good. I love that Jesus' command is positive, unlike that salesman. And the whole of the commandment of Jesus is worth studying. Who is you Jesus is speaking about here? The you is plural. While Jesus is with his disciples, he does not limit his words to them. Other followers of Jesus were there, and I believe they also were included in the word you. The commandment is for his followers of that time and place. It is also for everyone who become followers of Jesus even now. So, good news, friends. Jesus was talking to you and to me too. Thanks be to God for including us. That means we too get to love one another as Jesus loves us. Now, we who are the one another, I believe the one another is the same as you, all who follow Jesus any time and any place. But we are not being invited to an inclusive closed party. We are invited to an ever-expanding and inclusive circle. When we follow Jesus' command to love one another, people will know us by our love, that we are Christians by our love. So what is this love we are to have for one another? Love is putting the needs of the other people before our own. Jesus tells us we are to love one another as he loved us. In everything Jesus said and did, he put the best interest of all of us before his own. That is how he commanded us to love one another. The Gospel writer John does not write about the Last Supper. Instead, he puts a big emphasis on Jesus washing his disciples' feet. They lived in a dusty place wearing sandals, and feet get really dirty. Having grown up in a similar geography, I know how refreshing and reviving all the way to the soul it is when your feet got washed. Washing feet is a dirty job, and Jesus demonstrated that loving one another requires humility and joyful service. After washing their feet, Jesus tells them that as he has served them, so they should serve one another. Serve as they are served, love as they are loved. In putting their best interest first, Jesus became both Lord and servants, to them and to all of us. Mother Teresa said, we have all been created for greater things, to love and to be loved. Love is love, to love a person without any condition, without any expectations. Works of love are works of peace and purity. 
Works of love are always a means of becoming closer to God. So the more we help each other, the more we really love God better by loving each other. Jesus very clearly said, love one another as I have loved you. This love is easier to talk about than it is to do. There is something else to remember, says Mother Teresa. The kind of love begins at home. We cannot give to the outside what we don't have on the inside. This is very important. If I cannot see God's love in my brother and my sister, then how can I see that love in someone else? How can I give it to someone else? Everybody has some good, some hide it, some neglect it, but it is there. Back to us here now at Church of the Palms and in Sarasota, this is a time for love, deep love. Love of the sacrificial put the other people first kind. In the context of a moving COVID-19 virus, all of us are people of need. We live in fear of a virus we cannot see. The disease is confining most of us to our homes. They are people who must work, risking their own health, not just medical professionals, but food service people, and pharmacy people, and gas station people, and nursing home staff, to name a few. We're indebted to their sacrifice on our behalf. By putting the needs of the community before their own, they show their love in action for all of us every day. In their willingness to risk, we are all loved as Jesus loved. As Mother Teresa puts it, love in action is what gives us grace. We pray, and if we are able to see with our hearts, then we see the need. At Church of the Palms, we love one another through our prayer for the whole community. We love one another as Jesus loved in actions we take to help others. We love one another when we feed people through our food pantry. We love one another when we tutor children. We love one another when we Zoom Bible studies and Zoom children in Sunday school programs. We love one another in action when we practice the priesthood of all believers and assure one another that we are forgiven and that Jesus cares for us, body, mind, and soul. It is God's love in us that enables us to love God and to love one another. First John chapter 4, verse 12 says, No one had seen God, but if we love one another, we see God. God's love is perfected in us. For what more can we ask? We can ask whether the joy of being commanded to love is for always. The answer is yes. We are called to love one another for all time into eternity. We share together at the table of our Lord, joining Christians from around the world. We share with the saints and angels and archangels in heaven. Together by God's grace in Jesus, we get to love without end, love for eternity, love always. For several years now, we have had a basket of home communion packets in front of the communion table on communion Sundays. They are blessed in the service and taken out to those unable to join us in the sanctuary in person. Today, all of us are unable to be present with one another in the sanctuary here. While we cannot sit on pews or chairs next to one another, we can share the holy meal together still. The Lord Jesus is still the host, and we are his beloved guests at the table to the feast. Still, we shall receive the bread and wine or juice at home, the body of blood, the body of Christ, and the blood of Christ. It is still the holy sacrament, God's gift of love and grace to us. 
We are still going to love God and love one another and share this holy feast. As Sarah read to us, the psalmist said in Psalm 116, verses 12 and 13, What shall we return to the Lord for his bounty to us? We shall lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the Lord's name. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, this evening we have come together to the Lord's table in a very different way. The Lord Jesus is our host and all of us are his beloved guests. Because of the pandemic, we are in our own homes, not together in the sanctuary here. Though we cannot get together physically, we are together in our love for Jesus Christ our love for God, and our love for one another. Pastor Steve will break the bread, and Pastor Lori will pour the cup, and then I'll say the prayer, and we will share this feast of our Lord's together. But please wait for my indication before we start eating our bread and drinking our juice. Instead of having a very small little piece that we're used to getting passing through the sanctuary pews, today we have our own loaves like this. Hopefully you have even a bigger one. So break your bread and eat a whole hunk of it. And when the time comes to drink, whether you're wine or juice, please drink quite a bit. Nobody should go to bed hungry tonight. After all, this is the Lord's Supper, and no one really should go to bed hungry, and we should all enjoy this feast with our Lord Jesus Christ and one another. Hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are delivered by the Apostle Paul. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the same night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is the bread of life, my body broken for you. Amen. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup 
is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this and remember me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And friends, he will come again. Holy God, we give you thanks for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things new and filled them with your blessing. On this holy Thursday, we join countless angels offering you our unceasing thanks and praise. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these elements of bread and wine, here and at the homes of your people. Sanctify them to be your holy gift for your people, we pray, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Gracious God, in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis, we ask for your mercy and grace. Help scientists find medicines and vaccines, we pray. Sustain and protect all medical personnel, we pray. Guide and protect all those whose jobs continue to place them in contact with other people, we pray. Use your healing power for those who are ill. Comfort and be present with those who feel isolated and abundant or may be cut off from those they love and those who mourn. O oh God, empower us to continue to be your church, witnessing to your love and grace, serving the needs of all of your children, worshiping you and glorifying your holy name, loving you and loving one another within the church and neighbors and strangers outside the church, we pray. Now, O Lord, grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name, through Christ and in Christ and with Christ, and all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Hear us as we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I would like to invite those of you who are home to go to your bread, pick up your bread, because it is the bread of life, because we are sharing this bread at everywhere that we are, remembering Jesus' body that was broken for us. Now we eat the bread.
like to invite all of you at home and our musicians here to share this cup in Jesus' name. Let us drink and remember Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that where charity and love are, there you are. And we rejoice this evening that you are the vine and that we are the branches. You are the vine of love and we are the branches that extend into all the corners of the world. That even though we cannot be together, that we are all engrafted into your vine. We all draw from you your love, and we know that nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we rejoice and give thanks for this feast that you have prepared for us, and pray, O oh God, that this time together and this sustenance will sustain us into these days ahead, that as uncertain as they may be, O oh God, we give you thanks that your love will be forever and your love will be constant, and that we are all grafted to your vine. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Indeed, Jesus is our master, our Lord, and our friend. And let us remember that we have been given a new commandment to love one another as he has loved us always. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, now and always. Amen. Thank you.